Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I want to thank you for coming to my channel and watching my videos and supporting me. Thank you very much. Well, I did it two days in a row. I, I just can't seem to help myself. I, can't, I told myself, remember to do your shirt because yesterday when I did it, I, when I looked at the video while I was editing it, I realized I, for, I didn't show it all. You didn't even get to see it all. And so I thought, I'm going to do that tonight. And sure enough, I forgot it again. So I'm going to have to insert this into the video like I did yesterday. But this time, I'm going to make sure that I get the entire shirt in there. So here's the first part. It says, just married 50 years ago okay <laughs> so that's the part you didn't get to see yesterday so when I said that my wife gave it to me and she said it's no longer true you were probably going what's he talking about well that's what it was okay the first item I have for today is Julian Assange is free his persecution still threatens free speech I'm just going to read the first three paragraphs. In a major victory for freedom of speech, the UK government has released investigative journalist Julian Assange from prison. A UN special rapporteur, rapporteur, I don't know how that's pronounced, rapporteur, said last year that Assange's treatment constituted a form of torture and, quote, other cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment, unquote. Stella Assange, Julian's wife, told the BBC a few hours ago that the couple's two children still don't know that they would soon be united with their father, whom they've never met outside of prison. The U.S. government persecuted Assange in direct violation of the First Amendment after he released a 2007 military video showing U.S. airstrike that killed 18 civilians, including two reporters from Reuters, as well as other videos and documents given to him by a whistleblower. I think the importance of this story is not so much Assange or what he did as that when governments try to silence journalists, they are headed in the direction of totalitarianism. And the U.S. government should never do that. But far too frequently we do. Uh, I can think of a famous case from the Vietnam War where a reporter released what's called the Pentagon Papers and nothing was done to him because the leftists in the government were happy that he had revealed that. But when someone reveals something that they don't want to have revealed, then all of a sudden they start throwing state secrets at you and all sorts of other baloney and try to convince you that it's a good thing to suppress speech. This next article, I'm not going to read to you at all. I'm just going to present it to you. It's Niall Ferguson. We're all Soviets now. And he goes through uh, a very lengthy argument to show you that the way things are going in our country now is very much like it was in Soviet Russia, which is kind of depressing, but you know, it's hard to argue with reality. Anyway, I'll put that link in the description, just like I always do. And you'll be able to read that article if you're interested. Like I said, I found it interesting. This next article is by Matt Friedman, and it's called BB Trapped. And basically what Friedman has done is he has used a autobiography that uh, Netanyahu wrote to reveal some interesting uh, information about Netanyahu's personality and 
his willingness or lack of willingness to take responsibility when things go wrong. It's an interesting article, and again, I, I thought you would find it interesting. It's lengthy, definitely lengthy, as you can see. But it's worth the read, in my opinion. And so the link will go in the description. And then finally, I have this, which is, to me, a very interesting article that I thought you might enjoy reading. For once, it's not something negative or something uh, revealing something bad about people. It's what city kids learn on my farm. And I'm just going to read the first paragraph to you. Here are some things I have taught the kids who visit my farm. Animals don't care about your feelings, and sometimes we kill them to eat them. It doesn't matter how desperately you want to find more eggs, the hens don't lay on demand. Tomatoes aren't ripe in June. The stalls aren't going to clean themselves. Cuts, scrapes, and stings aren't really a big deal. And there will always be poop. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's a lesson that you learn if you've ever been on a farm. I worked on a farm when I was a young man. And I can guarantee you, there will always be poop. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit more to you. We host one family at a time, all through the year, in a renovated barn apartment overlooking the pony pasture. Most come for a week, some for a weekend. Every morning, I'll take a handful of kids, sometimes as young as three, through a two-hour hands-on class on animal care, life, death, and poop. All of them have to do some real farm work. There is a lot to learn. I don't expect a child to know how long it takes for a chick to hatch or why the roosters are always jumping on top of the hens, but I'm often surprised by some of the straightforward things they don't know how to do, like how to pull a wagon around a corner, hold a shovel, climb over a gate, make a braid, or tie a knot. Yeah. You know when we when we went from a what I guess you could I, I guess the right word is agrarian when we went from an agrarian society to an industrial society we lost a lot in the process living on the land teaches you lessons that you can't learn living in the city and you learn things that are that are both good for the soul and good for your own health and well-being living on a farm. It's something I would recommend to everyone at least spend a year or two working on a farm just to get the experience and to learn what it's like. I did it and I'm very grateful for it. That's the news for today. I pray for you as I always do at the end of every video and I pray that God will bless you with abundance and joy and peace and he will do the same for every person that you love. This is the Vietnam Mirror Vet out.